Welcome back everyone to your DB2 tutorial series. Now so far we have covered a lot of information when it comes to database design. I know some of you guys think I go into way too much detail when it comes to database design, but personally I think it is foundational to everything we do with a relational database. Because of that I got a couple more videos for you on database design. Just the relationships and the normal forms are not enough. So these upcoming videos are going to teach you how to enforce certain rules on your database to have the most data integrity. So that brings up a term for you guys, data integrity. If you say somebody has integrity, you think of that person as an honest person. They're consistent. You know who they are. They don't act differently in different situations. Well, the same kind of thing can apply with data. So if we're talking about data having integrity, you can trust the data to be accurate you're not going to have any kind of inconsistencies throughout your database. Essentially, with data integrity, you can just assure yourself that the data you're working with is the most up-to-date, it's correct, and it's trustworthy. This is an overarching term for a couple different types of data integrity. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next three videos. And this one is the first one. So the very first type of integrity is entity integrity. A lot of this is going to be review and pretty simple if you've watched the rest of the series, so don't expect something that's completely breathtaking. But I am going to give you some extra tips just to make sure you truly understand the concepts and what you should do to your database to ensure your database is up to standards. So first off, let me show you a bad example of a database table. Here is an example table for users. Let's throw some data in here. Let's say we have an Amy, we'll give her the last name White. And we'll say her email is amy at email.com. Now let's say we have another row here. And this is another Amy White with her email amywhite at email.com. And this brings up the interesting question, is this the same Amy with two emails? Or are these two separate Amy's? And in this situation, you can't really tell. Now when we do our database design that we've done in the last previous videos, you should know that you should never have two rows describing the same entity. So my heart is telling me that these are two separate Amy's. From this table, there's not a very good way to distinguish them. Unless you can say that all these emails are unique and Amy's not going to be going in here and making multiple emails. Generally, to enforce uniqueness, we need a primary key. Now, a primary key is just a column that has unique data in every single row. It also determines how the data is structured in your table. Often it's going to be sorted by the primary key. Now generally, I suggest just using an ID field or a column. So I'd have like a user ID and then just use generated numbers that count upwards. Alternatively, you can use what's known as a natural key, which has real world meaning, such as an email. You could make all these emails unique, meaning you could individually pick an Amy using their email. If you didn't have this user ID here or this email and you wanted to talk about a specific Amy White, you can't because there's not enough information to distinguish the Amy Whites. So you always, always, always need a primary key for the primary purpose of making sure every single row is unique in your table. Now generally, primary keys are going to follow these three rules. The data is going to be unique, which I just mentioned. The next thing is the data must be not null. And what that means is you can't have the absence of a value. So let's say we brought this column back and we had a one here, but we didn't have anything right there. You would say that this entry is null. Well, that's unacceptable for primary keys. So you can actually label a column as not null and it will prevent you from leaving that blank. Additionally, you're probably going to want to pick data that doesn't change. With this, I generally avoid natural keys such as emails because Amy might want to go change her email and that's just going to ruin everything. <laughs> so generally, I like what's known as surrogate keys or generated keys, but if they do change, it's not the end of the world. It's just generally frowned upon. That concludes entity integrity. In conclusion, it's literally just saying we need a way to say this is an entity and this is an entity not the same entity. You need to be able to uniquely identify each entity inside of a table. If you want a one sentence summary of all of that, give a table a primary key. Boom, done. You understand entity integrity. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we are going to be talking about referential integrity. This is one that is extremely important if you're going to be working with complex relational database systems. 
that have multiple tables. DB2 gives you a lot of ways to protect the relationships between tables. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. So catch you then. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and check out the description for some good links. Uh, there'll be a link to download DB2 and also check out the next video. See ya.